Hi, here's Energy TV from Stuttgart and right now we'd like to welcome Aaron Edison here in our Energy TV studio and he is the Executive Director of WGIC. Hi, welcome to our show. Hello, thank you. Great to have you here from USA, Missouri. <laughs> Aaron, um, for anybody, I'm not sure if there is anybody, but if there is anybody who does not know who the WG I see the World Geospatial Industry Council is. Very good. Explain it to them. Sure thing. I think uh, WGIC is the only global nonprofit trade association that is dedicated to geospatial and earth observation companies. So we support, although we're a nonprofit, all of our members are commercial, private companies in the geospatial and earth observation industry. Okay, so you just support them, you help them, and you... Uh... So we, we advocate in three main areas. Uh, our board, since we are a member-driven organization, my job as the head of our secretariat is to implement the wishes of the board, and the board mm -hmm. decides what areas that we work on. So our, we're, we're truly a member-driven organization. Currently, we focus in three main areas. We look at climate topics mm -hmm. that might be at a local or a national or international level. It might be through the UN, one of our partners. It might be through Ag Fund, UNGGIM, the Global Covenant of Mayors. The list goes on for our partnerships. The second pillar is around our policy. So we have a policy committee that, that weighs in as an industry on topics that might be emerging like GOAI, what are the implications mm -hmm. of that? But also on things like digital privacy and their geospatial data. Mm -hmm. And then our third pillar is around DEI within the geospatial and earth observation industry. But also as we look towards things like industry academia collaborations, you know, we have a very rapidly growing industry around geospatial and we have to contemplate where does the workforce come from whenever we see the industry growing so quickly. Mm -hmm. How can we get young talents or students into jobs in the geospatial sector? Because there are so many different jobs. There are software engineers, surveyors, there are people who work with, um, I don't know, they work in urban planning and infrastructure, they're helping to, to solve world problems, geospatial uh, techniques help to in climate change issues and so on. So how do we address the lack of, yeah, uh, um, um, industry professionals? Sure. So we. We believe that the industry is going to double in size in the next six years. And that means wow. that on any given day, there will be around 80,000 job immense. openings <laughs> every day. And so if we contemplate that against the slower growth of academia, we are dealing with the reality of a workforce gap. And so we're currently looking at ways to close parts of that gap. But I think you're, you find yourself in the situation where sometimes people have said geospatial is everywhere and nowhere at the mm -hmm. same time. And so it becomes a little more challenging on how you develop the curriculum, the training around those types of things. A lot of that is quite frankly on the job, but there are a lot of concepts that can be taught in schools and certificate programs and clinics, outreach workshops and things like that. But you're, you're exactly right, is that it's, it's a non-trivial thing because you can't continue to grow indefinitely if you don't have workforce to, to feed into that. And so I think it's really important, as we organizationally believe, that geospatial truly is in everything, and geospatial truly should be for everyone. What do you think how important are platforms such as Intergeo in addressing young talent, students, pupils from everywhere just, yeah, who also join us here? And we yeah. see them in the halls, they have pitches at the stage from bachelor and master's thesis and so on. So we have the Intergeo um, school day on Thursday. So a lot of things are happening here for young people. So what do you think a platform as Intergeo play in, the, in such a role? Oh, I think it's, it's an absolutely critical component of the of sort of the overall ecosystem of geospatial. It provides a focal point for everyone to come together. Not only see the new technologies, which of course are exciting and, and have uh, very uh, interesting demonstrations and things like this, but it's also a chance to connect with people and to have discussions that are more difficult to have on virtual. I think at this point, Everyone has started to understand virtual is very good at some things when we meet and it's lacking in other areas. And I'm, I'm really encouraged when I see young people coming to events like Energio because it's important for them to see not only what's going on in the industry, but talking to people who are in the industry uh, and advocating for them to say, hey, this can be for you. We will meet you where you're at, not where we wish you were at. 
And this is approachable because if we don't do that, what we wind up with are students that will attend, they'll see everything and they'll say, that's great, but it's not for me. I'm not that smart, I'm not that clever. But we can present it in such a way that it is approachable by these students and that then makes them lifelong professionals within our geospatial arena. When you compare just a global organization as WGIC and the global network here with a European or German network. I mean, Intergeo is really international, but we have here also very um, European um, surveying industries and so on. If you compare it, are there differences in uh, the challenges or the problems or the, yeah, the things they work on? I think anywhere in the world is slightly different. And it's, that's part of what makes it so interesting is that you get to see different approaches to solving similar types of, of challenges, especially around infrastructure around natural resource management, around climate mitigation, yeah. climate, climate adap everywhere. Yeah. adaptation, what works in this part of the world doesn't work over here. Mm -hmm. And there are good reasons for that. Um, interestingly, they're rarely technical. Mm -hmm. All of these challenges are around policy, around mm -hmm. Um, the available workforce. Yeah, we have technical around, solutions. Yeah. We have a lot of technical we solutions. We have a lot of technical solutions. We need an equal number of people solutions. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the areas that we focus on is to say, okay, you know, if we take a very complicated topic like digital twin, with all of the the demonstrations in the halls here at Energia, we, we technically know how to do a digital twin. The challenges around a digital twin are where do we get the resources? You know, if we build a digital twin, can we maintain the digital twin? Um, and so these are more complicated conversations, but they're not technical in nature. It's about how are we going to get all of this pointed in the same direction in service of being able to benefit from all the features that a digital twin brings or all the features that some technical solution brings. When we think about a solution, we think about it in service of solving a problem, whether it's climate or infrastructure or what have you, asset management. And that's the important piece is to keep that larger view to say, I'm using this tool, this thing called geospatial or earth observation to solve a problem. And sometimes in our industry, we might think or, or sort of get too close and we think the map is the end, but the map is just the beginning for the decision maker. Now we can go on and have a discussion and make a decision because we have the map. So it's a, an important distinction to, to think beyond the technology and bring all the other components in um, to have really the full picture. Very interesting. And thank you very much for the ch short chat here at Intergeo. It was really yeah, fascinating. And thank you very much for your time. Aaron Edison from the WGIC here at Intergeo TV. Thank you very much.